things have changed quite a bit in the world of the PS App Deploy Toolkit. Not least is that it's now no longer completely standalone, with Patch My PC now giving their support to help maintain and improve it. It is still completely free and open source, however, and it's still the best way to package your applications for deployment to Windows computers. That's why Robopack use PSADT for every single deployment that they do. That said, in December last year, the PSADT team released version 4, with significant changes to how it works. And so now I have the pleasure of making this lovely video explaining how to get started with PSADT version 4, which meant I've had to spend the past few weeks figuring out how it works. Let's jump in. From um, I'm going to use my cloud PC because I want to use my uh, Windows computer for this. You don't need to use Windows, but you can, and I'm, I'm going to do that for this video. So, firstly, the documentation is great, right? So when you do get started, just start with the documentation. Go to psapptoploytoolkit.com, getting started. Look at the licensing. It's free and open source. Just, just read through that if you care about that. Requirements, it works, as in the end user computer needs to be Windows 11, Windows 10, or Windows Server. The versions are mentioned here. And then downloading it. Now, it's a bit confusing when you get started, because you need to download a version to your admin workstation so that you can prepare the package that goes to the end user's computer, right? So that's the first bit that you need to do, is to get it on your computer, create a package, and then you can distribute that. You can also just test it on your admin workstation as well if you like, or you can test it on a different workstation before you push it out via Intune or Config Manager or whatever. In fact, you're meant to do that, and that's what we're going to do in this video. But let's start with just getting it on my admin workstation. And so you can do that by just using this command here, install module ps out to put toolkit. That's the main difference between the previous version where you used to have to download the files and then just extract them, and that was it. Now you can install the module. So from PowerShell, just run that command there. It will check various things and you'll need to press yes a couple of times if it's the first time you're installing the module. You do only need to install it once on your computer. I've already installed it, which is why it's uh, gone straight through to uh, the next line because I have installed it already. So that's how you install it, right? Very simple. Now, next we need to create a, a an instance of PSEDT on our computer for the application we're going to deploy. So let's do that. Uh, it doesn't mention anything around here around doing that. The next bit is actually creating a new deployment. If you're already using version 3, there is an explanation of the changes in version 4. If you want to read through that, take a look at that. Otherwise, get to creating a new deployment. And it says you can do that by, if you want to use a compatible version, you can do this version here with, uh, with version 3 at the end or just use this one here if you want to go straight into version 4. I'm going to do that, and we're going to go for oh, C. We need to specify the destination. In this case, I've got a folder called PSADT on my C drive. So we're going to go with PSADT, and the name is going to be FileZilla, because that's the app I'm going to do. FileZilla v, v3-69-2 is the version I'm going to download. So we'll do that. And that will just create the folder and create the template folder for us. I'll show you what it looks like in fine, not Finder, File Explorer. We can open up this folder here and you can see this should look pretty familiar if you use version three, but a few differences in that we're gonna go through shortly. Uh, I need to download FileZilla actually. So first I'm gonna to go to um, just Google for download FileZilla. Now, a word of warning with FileZilla, actually, when you are using this, I'm going to head to the FileZilla website, and if you do it, come along, if you do it uh, and you choose this download FileZilla client, it says this installer may include bundled offers. Um, that means when you choose to download, it actually downloads a version with, with sponsored in it, and that's just, it's not malware, but it's just potentially something you don't want. Right, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go to the additional download options and just download it here. Very similar, but choosing that will not include the word sponsored and won't include some application you don't want. So I'm just going to grab that, put it in my downloads folder, and then we'll move it to the right place. So back into File Explorer, into Downloads, I'm going to copy my file to the setup. 
and we go back to here and we want to put it in the files other folder into files and paste it there. They've helpfully put add setup files here.txt. You can delete that, you can leave it there, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to harm anything with it being there. But there is the file that we want to install. Now obviously this this installer, if I was to just run the installer using PowerShell, let me grab that location. If I just run FileZilla, it's going to present an interface. And obviously we can't have that. We shouldn't have that during a silent install of an application. So instead, I'm going to have to figure out how to silently install it. Now I happen to know how to silently install it because I've, I've done FileZilla before. It's going to be slash s and that will work. So we need to get that into the PSADT script. Let's get rid of that and go back to this and we need to open up the invoke app deploy toolkit, slightly different name than it had before, but we're going to open that up and we're going to open it in VS Code in this case. And there it is. Now it's in the FileZilla folder. Good, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, get rid of Copilot. Don't need Copilot today, thank you. Uh, can we move that out of the way? We can. Wonderful. So I'm going to scroll down to the install section here. And in install, we need to add the installation tasks. So in fact, before we do, let's go to variables because I need to fill in these variables. So it's it's the FileZilla project. The app name is FileZilla. The app version is 3.69.2. Architecture is x64. Uh, OK, that looks good. Oh, this, um, let's do that. And uh, 7.25. Wonderful, and it's me. I'm the author in this case of the script, not the app. Okay, great. So now down to let's look at, look at pre-install. Now in this case, they've in the default version that you get when you create the template, like I just did. It's got it's still got this close processes. I explore. I don't want to be closing Internet Explorer. If anyone has Internet Explorer open, maybe I do want them to close it because that's a bad idea. So I don't want to, I don't need this in there. But if you did need to close processes, then you can put them in that list now an array actually of um, processes you want to close. I might want to allow them to defer it, uh, or I might not even want them to have any uh, welcome dialogue at all. I can just get rid of it completely. I'm going to leave it there just so we can see it happen. It's not going to make a big deal for my testing. Um, okay, now the install bit. This is zero config MSI. I'm not. It's not MSI, so it's not going to help. But you can just throw an MSI in there, and PSADT knows how to install it, so it'll just do it. But in this case, I need to actually perform some tasks. So let's do that now. It is going to be start dash ADT process, not MSI. I don't know why it keeps doing that for me, but ADT process is what I want it to do. And then it is uh, actually it's in the documentation. Let me find it. It's in the docs. So we'll head over to the docs. And in reference, I'm hoping we have uh, start ADT process. There it is. Now, this is something like this. Where is it? Great. So example two is what I want to copy right now because that really is similar to what I'm doing. I'm going to go to code and let me just put it down here for a second so we can copy it. So start ADT, pro ADT process file path ADT session dot stir file. So it's actually a look. You don't want to put files slash files because that's not going to be relative to where you are. So this is the example of what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab all of that and put that there and it's in the files folder so then it's filezilla in fact I can copy the name of the file can't I that would be quicker grab that put that here close that close that and now we need argument list arg human list and it's going to be slash s uh, slash user equals all 
and I actually want to ignore some exit codes as well from my testing. I did need to ignore some exit codes, so I'm going to just grab that from my other script that I've used in the past. In fact, I need to check if ignore exit codes is still a thing that works, because they might have changed it to make sure it doesn't clash, but I'll put them in here anyway. And we'll see. Uh, let's see if ignore exit codes is still a thing. Um, ignore exit codes is still a thing. But they're not. They're in an array now rather than a string separated by commas. That's good to know. Okay, so we'll remove that. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do at all. We'll remove that and that, and there we go. Okay, now I can get rid of this thing here. And so now I've got the installer, right? Let's figure out how to uninstall it. Um, I actually have it written down somewhere, and yeah, I'll just head over to the install, the uninstall, sorry. And we're in the uninstall section, and we're going to do start dash ad adt process. There it is. Works now. File path is this one here. I'll copy that in. Okay, and there will be an argument list, no doubt, which is going to be slash s. And again, we'll ignore those exit codes. There we go, but not in commas. Okay. Okay. Now we're ready to go. I'm just going to save this. So I'll control S, save this. And now we are in a position to start testing. So we've now created, we've updated this file here. We can test this really easily by just running invoke app deploy toolkit. After a few seconds, it will open up the interface that you would normally see. There it is. And it says FileZilla project FileZilla 3692. Please select install to continue, or you might have deferral because we allowed deferrals on that. I can choose install. And it'll it's got the progress window that we allowed because that's in that's on there by default. And right now it's running that install command and it said it will let us know when it's finished. Uh, and there it has now got the the uh, you can customize text to appear at the end because I didn't customize it as you saw, but that's in there by default. So it says it's now installed it. I don't see a shortcut, but maybe it doesn't create a shortcut. There it is, FileZilla is there. So that works. We've now got FileZilla installed because we have tested that it works. Now I can run the uninstaller, which is by running invoke after deploy toolkit. Let me just grab that. Let me just grab that location again. In fact, I'm there, aren't I? Uh, so just go back one and do um, invoke after deploy toolkit deploy. In fact, I was going to do deploy mode uh, is uninstall, but that might have changed now. So let's head back to the docs and how to deploy. There it is. Uninstall. I saw it and moved off it. So this one here. Well, that's deployment to silent. Well, let's try it. Okay. Um, no, of course it's not. That's fair. I will keep using Mac commands throughout this entire thing. Uh, let me go back to the start. I can't get back to the start without pressing command. If anyone knows how to get back to the start on Windows when you're in a cloud PC on a Mac, let me know. Uh, but it is dot slash. Anyway, I've run that. Give it a few seconds. And I'm, all I'm expecting to see is that the FileZilla um, app icon disappears because it's running in silent mode. So give that a few moments.
it disappeared. Okay, so that works. Now the install command and the uninstall command work. And I can head into VS Code and see, firstly, that the progress dialogs are there. And this, this is the post install. So the install worked. Congrats, for example. And I can save that and just show you that when you run this again, if I just show you invoke app deploy toolkit without any um, anything at all, it will just run the installer and show that interface that we just saw earlier on. There it is. And when I choose install, it'll run the installer. And after a few moments, it will be finished. And it will tell me the it will show me the new text I've put at the end there. The install worked. Congrats. Now that's step one, really. We've now created a PSADT package using the template that works because we've tested it. The next step will be to get that into an Intune win and deploy it via Intune. But for now, that's where I'm going to leave it. And I will make another video on how to get this into Intune. I'll probably put it over there somewhere when it's ready so you can see it. See you then.